Well, hello, hello, hello. This is Brother Wes again, coming back to you again. Uh, this is what, Saturday? Saturday, uh, a little afternoon. Saturday after, afternoon, Saturday afternoon. I want to greet you in the name of the Lord. This is Brother West. This is Brother West, and you know, I'm always coming on here, ain't I? I'm always talking, always teaching. The scripture says that as a prophet, that's my job is to uh, uh, keep telling the people, make mention of the people Jesus did not until the people become a praise in earth. And so I'm just doing what God called me to do is just keep talking about Jesus, keep telling telling you about Jesus, keep tell, telling about what he can do, keep telling about how, he, how he's, he's bringing you out. And until you get it, until he speak to you, until he deliver, until he heal. And so um, today, though, today I want to talk about, um, there's a word called hamis, hamis. Uh, it, it, it means violence, it means violence. And uh, we'll do the teaching, uh, I'm going to do, do two scriptures. We'll read from two scriptures. The first one is going to, the first one is going to set, set what I'm trying to say up. And the last one is going to end my point. It's going to end my point. And uh, Harmless, you see the title, uh, How God Views Violence. That's the question. How do God view violence? We want to know. And so I know what the scripture says. I know what the scripture says, and it was violence that caused God to reduce up. It was violence. It was violence when God had said enough. Enough is enough. God got to a place where he was tired of man rebelling and man bucking and not hearing and, and just doing what they want to do and trying to invent, trying to create. And all that, all that, God, God got tired of it. He hated it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you scriptures. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some scriptures. I'm going to give you a little homework. A little homework. I'm going to give you some scriptures uh, concerning violence. And then God's position and our position as believers concerning it. What should we do? What should we do? And so God is going to explain also our position in regard to violence. But before I, I get into that, let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Bless you. Magnify you, God. Open my, my understanding of even clearer. God, even cause my lips to flow even more with more exactness in Jesus name and also God those that are hearing God allow them to hear what I'm saying hear what you're saying and that when they hear what you're saying that this word might leap into their spirit and not only that this word leap into their spirit wherever there's sickness, wherever there's a deficiency, wherever there needs to be a healing, wherever there needs to be an awakening, God become that. God become that in their spirit man and cause them to quicken and cause them to come back to life and be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. First of all, we will talk about I'm going to set it up, and we're going to go to Genesis, Genesis 8 chapter, Genesis 8 chapter, and we're going to go at the, uh, the 22nd, the 22nd verse, the 8th, 8th chapter, actually, the 8th chapter and the 22nd verse, and it said that, is that the one I wanted? No, no, no. We're gonna go that one. We're gonna go that one. Actually, go to go to Genesis. Go to Genesis six. Go to Genesis six and eleven. Genesis six and eleven. And I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it right now. And six and eleven says, "The earth also was corrupt before God." And the earth was filled with violence. And so let, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to. Uh, where is it at? Okay. Uh, was it the one? 
Yeah, this is the one. We're going to go back to the other one. We're going to go back to that other one, but 8.22, and it says, matter of fact, 21 to 22. 21 says, it, and the Lord smelled a sweet smell and savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living, every living thing as I have done. Now, this is the 22nd verse. While the earth remain, while the earth remain, there will seed time, harvest, and cold, and heat, summer, winter, and day and night shall not cease. Did you hear that? As the earth remains. That's what, that's what the scripture says. That's what, that's what God says in 8.22. As the earth remains, seed time and harvest will always be here. So in other words, what you put in the ground, there will always be a harvest. What you put in the ground. And um, even the scripture says it's not what goes in the mouth, but what comes out the mouth that defiles the man. And so it's all about reaping and sowing. And reaping and sowing means that whatever you put in the ground, eventually is going to come up. Just like us, we're God's seed. We're God's seed as believers. But what makes that seed from God is when you bear fruit. Because every seed or every every tree or whatever kind of tree or what kind of seed it is, when it comes to maturity, whatever kind of seed it is, it's going to bear that kind of fruit. The scripture says there's two types of seed, a good, a good seed and a bad seed. The scripture says that a good seed will bear only good fruit. If it's a good seed, it will bear only good fruit if it's a good seed. But then also the scripture says, but a corrupt seed or a corrupt tree can only bear corrupt fruit. No bit of ground, no bit of ground. And so in the days, in the hours that we're living in, it's very important to, it's very important to fruit inspect. But also it's very important to judge, or you can use the word, the gift of discerning of spirits to, to, to know and to differentiate between what's God and not, not, not. Because what you must realize that the Satan, Lucifer, Apollyon, he's coming as, transforming as an angel of light. But also as the word says, that not only just him, he got boys. He got imps. He got people on assignment. He got agents. The scripture also says in the last days, there will be false, you know what I'm saying? False apostles. False prophets. Also the scripture says, the scripture calls them deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Workers of iniquity. And their purpose is to deceive you. Their purpose is to deceive you and gather you up for Lucifer. To gather you up for wickedness. But the scripture lets us know also, you will know a tree by the fruit it bear. And so that's why our, our, our keenness or our uh, ability to, to really to discern really what's God and not is so important in this day and time because there are a lot of voices and, and you need to understand that in these voices that are out there, in these voices that, that are coming out and speaking, they come in the form of godliness. These voices are coming in the form of your friend, all that, all that. But you have to differentiate between what's God and what's not God. It's so important. And so, and this is what I want to do. I want to talk about and give you some definitions on the definition of or the meaning of violence. And one is called Hamas. Hamas is, is a Hebrew word. Hamas is, is spelled H-A-M-A-S. Meaning violence and wrongdoing. One of the meanings. Violence and wrongdoing. And and this is where, and this is where the scripture comes into the uh, fact that 
when I mention how God sees violence, how God sees violence in this scripture right here. And it's in uh, Genesis 16, 11. I read it before and I kind of jumped, jumped a little bit, but it says that. And the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And, and so, and so, and the, uh, and the, the 12th verse, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto, unto Noah, to the end of all flesh is come before me. And the earth is full with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them. I will destroy them with the earth. And so how God sees violence, God hates violence. Matter of fact, he said that he hates it and he's going to remove the violence along with the, with the earth at that time. And so this is how God views violence. And see, see, and see what you need to realize that we're living in the last days like it to the days of Noah. Just like it, just like it, just like it. Just like it, people are doing the same thing that they were doing according to the scriptures that they were doing in the time of Moses. Everything, just no respect for, for God, no respect for humanity, no respect for uh, creation. A man not respecting a man, a woman not respecting a woman, just doing in and everything and uh, just everything and, and becoming so and so angry and frustrated and, 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 and all of that. All of that. And one of the definitions of violence also is revenge. Revenge is an act of violence. Revenge is an act of violence. Revenge. That's why in scripture God says, vengeance is mine. And see, because violence is a part of the law of trespassing and sin. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, and, and another definition of the word violence also, now check this out, Genesis Genesis uh, write this down, Genesis 49.5 Judges, the book of Judges 9.24 and uh, uh, Genesis 49.5 and Judges 9.24 talks about extreme wickedness extreme wrongdoing, but also write this down, Isaiah 56, now Isaiah 53, verse 6, and verse 9, it also, uh, also, it, it's, 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 it's a, it's wrongdoing. Also, Hamas is to, to, to physically hurt someone. Also, let me find another definition. Another definition of Hamas is, is, um, Ed Hamas is a, a violent witness. Someone who's threatening life and the well-being of someone. But also in the Torah, uh, in the Torah, violence means uh, gazelle. Gazelle is G-A-Z-A-L. It means to rob. Also, it means to oppress human violence and to take, to rob. Also, you can find that in Isaiah. I also can find in Isaiah 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 14, um, chapter 10, verse 2, Jeremiah 22 and 3, Micah uh, 2 and 2, also Micah 3, 2, Micah 1 and 2, Deuteronomy, also Deuteronomy 24 and 14, uh, Old Testament book of Hosea, 12 and 7, Ezekiel, 22 and 7. Also, also you got, you, you got um, Hamas, but also you got another word, another Hebrew word called Haram. Now, Haram means to annihilate. It means to utterly destroy. It means to remove. Also, um, give me one second. But also, going back to Hamas, and I think I mentioned it in Isaiah 53, 6, also Isaiah 9, Hamas also is a cry 
unto God for injustice. Hamas also is a cry. It's violent, but it's a cry. Sometimes it's a cry defined as a cry to God for injustice. That God remove or that God replenish or uh, 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 bring a revenge or God restore or God bring order or God avenge. Because the scripture says, God said, vengeance is mine. Not an eye for an eye and two for a tooth. When, as the scripture says, when, you, when someone does something to you or slap you across the face or the cheek, the scripture says, give an other cheek. Someone asks to go a mile, as the scripture says, go, go two miles. Or ask for your coat. Give, ask for, give them a coat. And, but also, um, also, the scripture says to bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you. And so those are some of the things that, some of the definitions of the word hummus is, and hummus basically means to, to bring harm, to bring hurt, to, to, to threaten, um, to, to uh, physically attack, to, to, to take away life, um, to murder, to hurt, um, to harm, to, uh, uh, to do wickedness, to rob, to rob. See, but the great thing about God and the great thing about knowing God, he says to fret not yourself as a believer because of wicked and evildoers. He tells us not to fret ourselves because soon they will be cut off. Also, the scripture says that because the treasures of the wicked are laid up for the just. And so, like I said, in closing it all up, it's very important as believers. It's very important to, um, um, uh, to watch as well as pray, but also to avoid violence. We are peacemakers. We are peacemakers. We are not trying to destroy, but we are trying to bring together. And as a believer, as a believer, if you if you if you get a line of inciting violence, then you out of order. You out of order. And then I must question your motive. See, because there are six things, there are seven things that God hates. And and one of those things is feet that are swift to sow discord, to murmur, to complain, to fuss. But also, I want to bring this up when it comes to government. When it comes to government. Now, did you know that Jesus himself, he is government, the kingdom of God? Because the scripture says, unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And government means authority. It means to govern. It means to rule. And so my question is, what government are you looking to? Or what government are you serving? See, because even in this time, even in, in, in this time that we're living in with, with the election and with the pandemic and, and, and all of that, and all of that, the scripture lets us know, the scripture lets us know, cursed be the man that trusts in a man or a woman, but bless be the one, be the man or woman who hope God is. And so you need to know that as, I, as I've been stating, when you love the world, the love of God is not in you. When you love the government, the love of God is not in you. See, because the, 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 uh, Lucifer, Satan, Apollyon, he is the God of the real system. So he's, he's doing the influencing. He's the one that's influencing. He's the one that influences minds. He's the one that's inciting violence. He's the one. He's the one that's inciting violence. He's speaking to many who listen to him. And those that get theirs and listen to him, they execute his plan of violence. See, but as peacemakers, we're not going to get caught up in that violence, but we're going to pray for peace. We're not going to live in violence because we understand that God hates violence. The scripture, the scripture, and some of those scriptures that I gave you, it's going to tell you that God hates violence. If that wasn't so, why 
did God tell more that has done come up to him? And he, that he decided to move, remove the violence as well as the earth through water. So watch as well as pray because we're in the last days and the thing that happened then is coming again. But this time it's coming with fire. God is coming with fire. He's coming with judgment with fire this time. And so, and, and so as the scripture said, bring your heart and not your government. But also, also God says the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Don't harden your heart, but open your heart to receive life because he wants you to be saved. He wants you to get into the ark of safety. He don't want you to die. He don't want you to get caught up in the current of racism. He don't want you caught up in the, in the current of violence. Because violence didn't come from God. God hated it. How can God, how can God orchestrate it? But the thing about it, those who sow violence, they are going to reap a greater, a greater violence. And those are my words. God bless you. And they will smile on you. And may all God's best for yours.